Good afternoon. Thank you so, so much uh, to Mike Bloomberg, to Patty Harris, to Bloomberg Philanthropies, the Atlantic, and the Aspen Institute. It's uh, a great, great pleasure and privilege to be here with Jonas Friedman, Francis Kere, and Jonas' collaborator, Anne Kinchin. And we're going to discuss some of the topics Mike Bloomberg summarized in his brilliant introduction this morning, which are so urgent in relation to cities. In the 21st century, climate change, of course, network of cities, and the idea of cities as forces of change, because both Jona and also Francis have done and are doing pioneering work in this direction. Both built the Serpentine Galleries uh, pavilion, Jona a summer house, and Francis's pavilion is this year. For those of you who are in London, it's there until uh, November. And it's very much our commitment to participatory architecture, to the power, really, of architecture to change the life of a community. Jona Friedman was born in 1923, and in the late 50s has already pioneered the concept of the Ville Spatiale, which is an idea which has inspired generations of architects, from archigram to metabolism to today, and he's always sort of taught us how not to destroy the environment. Francis uh, is a German-trained architect. He comes from a very small African town of Gando in Burkina Faso, uh, and has, from the very beginning of his trajectory, when he founded the Kerry Foundation, uh, actually basically reinvested knowledge into Burkina Faso, created amazing schools. He's very involved in building cities in Ouagadougou, uh, and, of course, community structures, and the idea of creating structures for people to congregate is very much at the center of what Francis does. It's now my immense pleasure to hand over to Francis, and he'll give us an introduction to his work. We then have a short introduction also from Jona and open it to a discussion. Yeah. Can we have the slides? So welcome, everybody. It's for me a great pleasure to be here today. Um, so to share what I have been observing and maybe what I have been doing with you. Here we have a picture. It is the cap a picture of the capital city of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou. Um, as you can see here, we see that the structure is growing horizontally. So what means this? The structure is eating land that you normally need to feed people. So here we see that the growth of the city is causing a lot of problems to the decision maker, to everyone, and to the population. Um, there, you cannot really build communities. Second one, please. So the next one is, I want to remind you that um, the Euro European and American cities, your biggest fan, your biggest fan are from Africa. We are looking, looking forward to you. So we sometimes just do copy things that you're doing. It's, it's not this picture, but uh, um, we look at to your structure and we want to have them. So here is another example what you can do if you come from my culture and you land in a big city like London where you have the chance to create a gathering space for the community. You know, the pluralism of community living in London was happy to have this pavilion. And you create gathering. You just need to design according to people. People will come together. They will talk about the structure. But later, they start to talk about themselves. So the next one is like a vision. What do you do if you have a capital city like Ouagadougou? where you have, the next one, next one, please, where you have, where you have uh, no space for, for people. You understand? In the center of Ouagadougou, there is the green space. It's the football, soccer play of the U.S. school in Ouagadougou. And there is the only green place. The another one is the roundabout, and it is green. What happened is, after wedding, after celebration, you will see people going there to take photographs. What is, uh, if you use the parliament house, to create a structure for the community to come and gather there. So, by the next revolution, they will not burn it down because the parliament house was burned down in 2014 by a revolt. So we have the potential to do things. You, as a decision maker, you have to just give us a green light, the go ahead, and then we will help you create, design the cities for the future. Francis, thank you so, so much. And as you said earlier today, a city is for all of us to feel home. And that very much is, of course, the motto of Jona Friedman. Jona has created uh, four special drawings for all of you, uh, so they should be distributed. Uh, it's a short story he wrote uh, the last couple of days, very specially 
for the City Lab here in Paris. Uh, and it's my great, great pleasure to now hand over to, to Jona and invite him to speak. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I am now nearly a century old, so I have to talk about the future of city. And uh, my experience during uh, nearly a century that I have no idea, but I see the new context. The new context is the complete opposite that what I met before. You know, I, I think there we have full of new things. Uh, you, you can work, you don't need to go to the office, you can work at home. You can meet people. I am meeting people in China or in Japan or in the States without moving from my armchairs. I can have goods simply by phoning. I am now an invalid, and even without moving too much, I have all the world. Uh, uh, to reach. Now, I will try to take some conclusions for the future of city of this situation. You know, people build enormous skyscrapers, thousand meters high. What are doing people in the skyscrapers? They are typing on their uh, computer but they could do it at home. When I was a student, I was told, markets are very important, there is where you meet people. I never meet anybody I know in a supermarket. Everything goes other way than before. So, I take a conclusion. Cities were the product of a proximity. A proximity was necessary. Certainly, the proximity is not necessary. I could live at the, uh, in a beautiful landscape anywhere and have all the social contacts and all the, uh, uh, I don't know, all the commodities and I could work, I could lead a factory or make office work simply in my armchair, that's new. And there is another thing you will tell, people are going to the city because of jobs, but jobs are changing. The jobs people were going to the city are done by electronic media. There is a kind of job which cannot be done by computer. This is personal care. When I was an invalid, I needed some personal care. This only another person can do. So the attraction of cities for jobs, it changes. You need an other kind of job, and for this, no big city is uh, necessary. So, this situation suggested me that we don't need any more the density. Even for security, surely in the Middle Ages it was necessary. Now, the crowds are dangerous. People are afraid to crowd in the street because this is where terrorists attack. You know, they, you have it in the daily news. We have now a situation that perhaps we need to disperse it. We don't need a growing Paris. We need many cities of Europe, I was calling it Metropole Europe, with fast trains. London is today a suburb of Paris, 
and Brussels is a suburb of London. <laughs> That's the situation. What would be my proposals? I am not looking for plans, but I am trying to look for strategies. Strategy is different from plan because you have an adversary and you have to adapt every moment. The first strategy I would find important, this is make the fast train network in the sub subway, the metro, a carte orange on the fast trains. This might be one of the solutions. Second thing, there is no necessary to stream to the city. You can live outside of the city because of the context. Perhaps the right strategy is a dispersal of cities, not the concentration. And the dispersal? And I think that Africa, you should use the situation that you can disperse the city instead of... Con but this I might be wrong. I cannot make strategies for Africa. But I th think uh, that really, uh, the, uh, as well for many reasons, environment, health, people don't want to live any more crowded. I am every year in Pasadena. Pasadena, it could be an example. It's a green city. You have a house, but it's important that you have trees and a garden. The uh, services, yes, in Pasadena you have a battery electricity and solar battery. They need it because an earthquake tomorrow could uh, demolish the network. And I think that's an important thing technologically. We don't need any more the centralized network, but there is a possibility of autonomy. And Jona, thank you so, yeah. so much for yeah. this comment. Yeah. Actually, one topic uh, yeah. you're both working on, which is very fascinating, is the topic of migration, because yeah. uh, Francis at the moment is working on a new project related to refugees. And of course, Jona, you have been for many, many decades working on this very urgent topic, which is so relevant in relation to cities now. Um, so I wanted to ask no. maybe Francis to start telling yeah. us about your project. No, with uh, and, yeah. One of the biggest issues that um, also cities are facing today is immigration. Um, a couple of days ago, I heard to someone saying, we have no choice. Pluralism is important in our cities. These people will come. Uh, not just in Europe. So the thing is to know that uh, uh, somewhere in the underdeveloped places, many refugees are there. So, but I think the challenge is how do you tackle this problem? Um, how do you provide infrastructure for these people coming? I think if we do it in a smarter way, we will succeed. What is this smarter way? We cannot just focus to one group. We have taken under account the refugees, try to create affordable housing for those that are already existing in our places, in our cities, um, and earn less money. We have to create even affordable housing for them, so we will secure the freedom that we have. If we don't do so, if we don't do so, what the thing is, we are giving power to those that want to have exclusion. I'm talking about the radicalism that is growing everywhere in Europe. Uh, again, again, people are forced to migrate. And it is not the first time. When I met uh, Yoni this morning, uh, Mr. Friedman told me, Francis, I have been three times migrant in my life. So, and I know that most important creative people first in the US that we know today are coming from migration. And that's why I'm, I'm a pledge. We have to stand up and find solution for that and create much human cities. Maybe Jona can tell us about migration. the theme of migration. Yeah, 
Okay. So, uh, above migration, permit me uh, a sociological, biological analogy. I am always telling as an example, look at me, I am a welfare state, a welfare state of 100 million cells, and the 100 million cells have no direct direction. There are some specialized organs. The most important, that cells cooperate with their neighbors. If they don't cooperate, I would have cancer. So, there I will add now about migration. I had several times small, small operations. I got transfu transfusion, but they were foreign DNAs injected to me. Till now I have them, and I live with them. Everything is at the cell cooperation. If you want, the city, what I see, is dispersed and neighborly cooperation. Mm -hmm. If you want, perhaps let us call it a grassroots city. And that's, um, I might be in an error, but I take my hand <laughs> nearly 100 years of experience for it. So I, I'm sorry. I have to do it uh, very fast. We, if, you, if somebody has questions, I will be glad to answer it. Now, maybe a last question to both of you. Last night, <laughs> Mr. Pika said that he's going to come back in a year with a thousand solutions, <laughs> a thousand <laughs> solutions for, for city. I've been thinking about it all night, the yeah. thousand solutions. I want to ask you both to tell us about solutions for future cities. Maybe we can give it to Jonas. So yeah. He, yeah. And maybe Francis can start. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, of course, um, we, are, we are challenged. I mean, every one of us, planner and decision maker, I think that is the time to come together and try to work closely and find solutions. So if um, we don't succeed, if we don't transform our cities to very green, ecologically, I'm not just talking about plants. I'm talking about saving energy. I'm talking about inclusion. So if we don't handle like that, it's going to be too late. I can tell you, I don't have the exact data, uh, but uh, according to some researcher, in 50 years, uh, the labor force in Africa will be double the same in Asia. Can you imagine? So, I mean, it's you. You have to use these resources, human resources, to help make a better future. So it is there. It's the challenge is always leading to great solution. That's why I'm calling the decision maker to just give the green light to technician, to designer, even to this, the, uh, Mr. with the 1,000 solution. We have to push him to see what we can um, get for our people. Maybe a last word from Jona about solutions. So, uh, so you were asking solutions. about solutions. I have no solutions. Nobody has the solutions. The solutions have you, people. You know, I am giving always for the new city a model which is ridiculous. Think about the beach. People are occupying the beach in an unformulated way, and it works. It is completely dispersed. No planner, it's improvised. And I think the, if we had a very important error with the refugees, it is the first time that we have an urban laboratory. Sorry, I'm not telling a city lab, but a laboratory where a cities can grow in their own way, simply improvised by people who live there. And that's it. Don't forget that all the big cities existing, starting with Rome, they were refugee camps. Rome and the big American cities. It is a chance 
to have the migrants and give them the facility, not the ready-made, but give them the facility to invent the new city. That's the solution what I would propose. And as Jonas said this morning over breakfast, without us, the city has no future. Jonas and Francis, thank you so, so much, and thank you very much. Thank you all.